Flow back with another video showing you guys how I edit my bike life photos in Lightroom. And this, um, I'm going to try to make it quick, but I'm going to try to give you guys good detail on how I do it. And uh, sometimes pictures take longer than, you know, expected, but hey, that's what comes with it. So I'm going to show you guys how I edit it from start to finish all the way in depth detail. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it, man. So um, I'm actually gonna get started with this photo here um, that I took not too long ago. And um, don't mind me if I'm all over the place because that's just how I edit and how I need some things to link to other things to get done. But hey, let's get it done. So first I'm gonna, um, I always, check my exposure and shadows to see if the photo would be sometimes I take certain photos um, and I can look at it and tell if I can edit it really good or if it's going to be difficult so even by taking this photo I knew I could you know get something good um, even here in Lightroom I can really tell that I can really do something nice to this so I always check the exposure. I'll brighten it up some, and then I'll bring the shadows up to see if it's going to look good, even with the shadows up. And right there, I could tell, as you can see, see, I still got detail. It might not be as clear, but I know with the right edit, you know, it'll be pretty good. So what I'll do is I'll leave this like this, and then I'll go to crop. Once I go to crop, I will turn it here. And as you can see, it looks kind of crooked somewhat. So what I'll do is actually go the other way to make it look like I'm actually turned to the side with him. So now it looks somewhat even, but, you know, I'm not going to too much worry about the crop right now. So firstly, I come here to my light section where the exp I already um, touched the exposure and shadows. And then what I would do is bring the contrast up. As you can see, it does make a difference. I bring the contrast up usually to about 30 to 40. And as you can see, it's um, gotten uh, made the blacks black a little bit more. And that's fine with me. So with that, I usually come down to my point curve. And I will make my points on my curve for later. And then with that, I'll go down to optics. And then I'll remove the chromatic aberration. And sometimes, not all the time, sometimes I'll enable the lens correction. And as you can see here, it makes the photo more flat. It makes it like a flat look, but it also gets rid of the vignetting, which I really don't want. So what I could click on it and then, you know, add the vignetting back to it. But, you know, I just, that's just, I just don't want to do that. So I take the lens correction off because I still want the, the dark around the edges and in the sky. So next what I do is come here to a brush. Get my first brush on the ground because I like to sometimes start from the bottom going all the way up. I take it to the clarity up to 30s. I'm actually going to dehaze this about 10. And then I'll take the black to around seven. And then what that's what it's gonna give the ground the clearness, and then it's gonna take the haziness out of it, and it's also gonna make the ground dark with the blacks. But even if it doesn't make it all the way dark, you see it still makes the ground clear enough to see. And here. And here we go. It doesn't have to be perfect, you know. I'll get around a few around the edges. Oh, I think I got some on the shoe. Kind of don't want that because I'm going to need that off. All right. So then I get another brush and I'll come over here to the bike and the rider. And because I post these photos online, 
I send them to my phone and post them online. Um, I actually take the clarity up to the 70s or 80s. And the sharpness, so you know, guys, don't worry too much. You're like, oh, it's gonna be too sharp. It's not gonna be. Once you add it online, the internet takes clarity away. So by you adding so much, it kind of makes it even. If you guys understand what I'm saying. But I'll still show you how to fix. So what I'll do is come here. As you can see, it's kind of dark here, but I'll fix that. And then you know, just put it on the subject. See, as you can see, it's making the subject real clear. Yep, 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 yep. It's foot. And you guys, if you guys didn't know, this is actually a trick. So he didn't fall or nothing like that. Because people is definitely ask me, is, is, is he falling off the bike or no? Nah, this is actually a trick. So, okay. You guys see here, I got it pretty much done. Um, not looking for perfection, you know, because it doesn't have to be. So it's actually kind of dark for me. So what I would do is come over here to the shadows while I'm still on the brush, while I'm still on the individual subject, and come up, bring the shadows up into a liking. Not into like a certain number, but into a liking. So I come here, 50s. Okay, that works for me. And then I'll get the eraser part from that. And I'll just go around the edges. So, you know, it can take that uh, white haziness from around the subject. And here. It's not too noticeable, but it's noticeable to me. And... Hold on, that's a little bit more. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, so this kind of good, so I'll probably take it down a little bit for the something like that. So it kind of looks okay evenly. So what I'm actually gonna do is, like as you can see, the edges here is too dark for me. So what I'm gonna do is turn the vignetting back down and see wow there it goes so with that being said like I said I'm, I'm usually all over the place so I'd come here to my linear uh, linear gradient remember to reset all the set all the um, presets and then take my highlights down all the way down take my highlights all the way down and what that does I'm going to show you it actually makes the sky pop so as you can see it'll bring those clouds out and you can see the difference and there it is I usually leave it here I don't usually leave it like this because it'll leave a line like you'll have a noticeable line so what it does is this kind of like fades it in so, and what I would do is come here to the eraser, and I'm going to show you guys why I'm going to erase in a second. And here we go. Erase here, here, here. And erase is just something that I'll do for my next act. So, as you can see, it's pretty much gone. It doesn't have to be perfect, like I said. These aren't, like, portraits or anything like that. So, it's okay. And next, what I'm going to do is come back here to the brush. Like I said, I'm everywhere. And I'll come here. And now I want to make my background. And depending on the stop that I used on the photo, I would bring the sharpness up or I'll bring it all the way down. You can bring it all the way down or midway. And I'm going to leave it here at around 70. So I'm going to show you guys what I'll actually do with that and what it does. So with the sharpness being down, as you can see here, I'm going to show you, do you guys see 
how it took the how it took the sharpness out of this entire area here it took the sharpness out so i'll show you um now it's down and i'm gonna go up and continue to look at the uh trees and now you see it's back sharp and you take it down now it's like a it's like a sense of like bokeh and that's how i kind of add more bokeh to what i do like if i'm shooting and i kind of want to make some bokeh uh pop more than it is that's what i do i'll take the sharpness down and i'll come over and brush it right in and here we go get this rider back here and you got to remember that right here is where you kind of need more precision than just like being anywhere else because you don't want a part of this um, rider and subject to be blurry I don't want them to be blurry so okay and I'll come here and I'll color the fence in da, da, da. here we go and you guys can see see now the background now you can pretty much see it better and let me get down here behind him and make the brush smaller and voila there we have it so you guys can see the background is pretty blurred out and if I bring it up, you guys will see that it's kind of back. And then it's back blurred out. Okay. And then if I want to make it more than that, I'm actually going to show you guys another trick on top of the trick. What you can do is duplicate it. And that will intensify it. As you can see now, it's really blurry. The subject is really isolated. And that's all you do. And then you um you can delete it. And it'll only delete the second layer. And you can duplicate it at the second layer. And then what I like to do is since the since the um background is so blurred out. But I don't want to make it look weird like that. So what I actually do is offset it by adding clarity to about 45. And now you guys can see, yeah, it's blurry, but it stands out. So I can add more 60. And as you can see, the background is still blurry, but it's, it stands out. Excuse me. And I'll come over here, hop on the sidewalk with this. And it's okay to get, touch the same area. All right. So, and I'll show you guys how we started. That's how we started original. And this is where we at so far. And I'm kind of liking it. So, hey. And now what I will go back to is the linear gradient, what I was showing you guys earlier. So here. And I'm gonna show, and I'm gonna show you guys why I erase some areas. So what I like to do with the skies, I'm gonna show you guys what I like to do with the skies. So I'm gonna come over here to the tint, to the pink, and I'm gonna take it up to about 30. And as you guys can see, the sky is now pink. Okay. And what I'm going to do is actually bring another layer down. You guys can reset that. Bring the, remember, first thing, highlights all the way down to bring out the sky. But it's already up there, so it's kind of okay. And then if I play the tint 30 on the first layer, the second layer I want to do is add yellow and make it around half of that. So as you guys can see, the pink area and the yellow area. 
So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna bring that one over here and I'm gonna rotate it because I kind of want it to go evenly across and then I'll pull it down right here. All right. So I'm gonna go to the eraser and erase it off of the building, kind of off of the trees. This area, you, it doesn't have to be perfect, but you kind of want it to look, you know, okay because the yellow i'm going to show you guys what i'm going to do. you don't want the yellow on the sky and on like the subject it's going to kind of look weird but remember it's to your liking so this is just how i edit so there's some deleting kind of okay with me not too bad look at here okay so as you guys can see the sky looks you know, it's, it's, it gives you like a little, you know, a nice feeling, like a dope feeling to it. So, with that being said, I'm going to come back up here to my settings. And this is where I kind of get like the freestyle to it. So I can, the point curve freestyle, I mean. So, I forgot the exact, um... I forgot the exact um, labels of these uh, points, but I kind of just know them by now. So here, this is pretty much going to be like my exposure to like the sky, the upper area. It kind of exposes anything in the background in the upper area. So what I like to do is bring that midway here. And as you guys can see at the sky, it brings out an area in the sky like the like the sky is shining through the clouds. So I can bring it back now and I'm gonna show you guys again. And see if you don't wanna bring it all the way, that's fine. To me, that looks better to me. And sometimes this area will, if you go too far, it'll poke out like that. And I don't wanna do that. Cause when you bring it in, sometimes this area controls like the highlights of the ground and sometimes it'll look weird and faded so what I'll do is add another point curve and I'll put it push it back to where it was so now the ground is back to normal but the sky is still blown out a little bit in this point I like to bring it up because it it brightens up the, the sky a little bit more for me so that's fine with me and then I'll come down here to the bottom, which controls like the blacks and the shadows. You can take it over as you can see, it made the darkers, the darks darker. You can go down. If you go up, it'll fade. And if you go to the left, that's how you pretty much fade, make the image look faded like that. A little contrast. But I'm gonna come here and leave it back like that. Yeah, so that's what I do so far. As you can see, We'll look at the original, as you can see, like I said, I can see pretty much how I'm gonna do an image, by the way, by looking at the photo. I can look at you know a few different things and tell what can I possibly do with it. And then where we are so far. And we'll come to, come to the colors. And it's usually right here on the green already because I like to play with the greens mostly. You can take the hue all the way down, and as you can see, it makes the trees a more of a yellow color. It changes the greens to yellows. If you want to make it really green, it, you know, that's what it does. But I'm pretty much going to come down here and leave it below the hue. And I'm going to take the luminance down. And that's pretty much all I would do because there really aren't any other colors that I would like to use right now. And I'll come over here to make the colors pop more. So I'll come to the vibrance. I'll come to about an eight. The saturation, I'll go to about the same eight. And yeah, so pretty much everything is bright. And that's pretty much all I touch. I don't really touch anything on effects because I like to use the individual detail also. I really don't, you know, do anything with that. 
and I come here for individual radio um, edit when I'm trying to get like a certain area like save this area right here if I wanted to make it brighter I would but there's nothing that I want to do I may come here as you can see the ground is kind of dark to me so what I would come to do is reset bring up the shadows and as you can see you stretch it out you fade it in see voila that's pretty much what that do so now this entire area up to here is the shadows but it's stretched out and faded in so it blends better and what I come to do next is open it in Photoshop come and edit in Photoshop because that's where I have um, my logo that I put on the photos And I'm gonna let this load as you can see it takes kind of a while because this edit is kind of like intense sometimes I do more editing more individual everything so it kind of you know I got a load and I got a lot of images yeah so I let this load up man but if you guys have any questions, oh, well, see it changed. There's another one that I edited, and I pretty much like how that's looking. So much the same, you know. <laughs> Where's that image? Oh, it's here. Uh, I'll close it out and I'll do it again. Sometimes it takes that. Don't know why, but hey. And now I'm just pretty much showing you guys how I place my watermark on photos. over to Photoshop you guys can see another image that I did um, while the other one is loading it, this is another image that I had did um, as you guys can see I placed my watermark here on a shirt um, a lot of times I place my watermark on photos where people can't see them um, I don't know it's just something I like to do I could you know just place it all the way up here in the sky and let everybody see it but you know I you know that's not just for what I want to do. Um, sometimes people will crop the image. Look, well it's coming in now, so hey. Okay, so I'm gonna show you guys. Okay, so now it's here. Come to my finder. I have it saved on the computer. Oh, go back up. So downloads. Come drop. Now I'll lighten it to make it white. And I could place it here on a building. I could place it on the fence. I can make it real small to place it on the bike. You know, I could place it anywhere. I could place it on the bottom of the shoe. You know, that might be something that I might do. Place it at the bottom of the shoe, kind of make it look realistic. Instead of just plain white right there, so I kind of rotate it since his foot's rotated, and then I'll come over here and change the opacity and fill. So what I do is click background, and now it's on the shoe. And click back on the layer, and I'll break it down about 60. As you can see, it's kind of making it look like it's more realistic and not just placed there. And 50 something. 
so yeah as you guys can see now it's here it looks more realistic it looks more like it's there than actually just placed on the picture you know a lot of times people won't even pay attention to that because it looks like that it looks more realistic like it's placed like it was already there and what I'll come over and then I'll just come over airdrop it and that'll pretty much you know be that so with that being said you know I um So with that being said, really, I was just showing you guys how I go through and I edit, you know, my bike life photos. And if you guys have any questions, you know, you can drop a comment. You know, I reply to them if I can. Um, I will leave my Instagram link down below. So if you guys want to contact me on Instagram or you know follow my page for more photos like this content, you know, you're more than welcome. Don't forget, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, you know, and peace be unto you, my friend. Thank you for watching. Peace.